So in today's video, we want to look at uh, the new SCAA coffee tasters flavor wheel to update the 1995 version uh, that was put out, mainly created by Ted Lingle. And we've been getting overwhelmed with questions. Every student we have at all of our different schools are saying, hey, can you teach us about the new coffee flavor wheel? But I think to really understand the new SCA coffee flavor wheel, you have to first understand the old flavor wheel, just for context. So that what we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at the old flavor wheel, this guy, and we're gonna look at the World Coffee Research Sensory Lexicon, which is um, a collection of 110 different descriptors for coffee. And then this new coffee flavor wheel is kind of based on the old coffee flavor wheel and the sensory lexicon. And that's why we need to really look at both of them to understand the new flavor wheel. And so this flavor wheel was developed to create a common language so that people could discuss coffee uh, in a way that was mutually understandable. Um, it's, it's organized systematically. On the left side over here, we have defects. And these defects are divided by how the defect might come about, internal changes, and then we go outward from there and we find that fats change chemically and get sweaty flavors that may be caused by lactic acid or this lactic acid flavor. Then on the right side of the flavor wheel, which most of us use, we have our taste divided by the four basic tastes and going out into more and more detail from the center. Then this half is where we spend most of our time on the aromas. The aromas are broken into three categories, enzymatic, sugar brown, and dry distillation. And then further into groups, subgroups, and then the individual attributes. We end up with 36 different flavor attributes. And now we're gonna look at the five reasons, the five reasons that the aroma side of the old flavor wheel is laid out the way it is. Those five reasons are roast level. Number one, roast level. So a light roasted coffee is gonna have more enzymatic flavors. Medium roast is gonna have more sugar browning. And a dry distillation, a coffee roasted darker is gonna have more dry distillation flavors. And so you have light, medium, dark roast kind of in clockwise rotation. Number two is when these flavor compounds are developed. Enzymatic flavor compounds are developed in farming, in the growth of the coffee, in processing. Sugar browning are developed in the roasting process just after first crack. Dry distillation is developed later in the roasting closer to second crack. Number three, these substances will vary in molecular weight. Typically these enzymatic substances will have lower molecular weight, higher molecular weight, and even heavier molecular weight. Number four, volatility. Because of this low molecular weight, these enzymatic compounds are gonna be quite volatile. Sugar browning, less volatile, and dry distillation is even less volatile. Number five, um, because of how volatile these compounds are, it's gonna change when you might perceive them. For example, enzymatic, these compounds are extremely volatile. So when you first grind the coffee, you get these rush of berry flavors and fruity flavors and floral flavors out of this fresh ground coffee. So enzymatic, very volatile. You, those flavors come out very easily by just grinding the coffee. However, sugar browning are less volatile and you really need to pour water on it to get this extraction and the steam and the extraction really bring out these sugar browning flavors. Almost any coffee, when you pour hot water on the grounds, you will get sugar browning flavors. Try distillation, even heavier molecular weight. You're really gonna notice these flavors when you drink the coffee and even in the aftertaste of the liquor. So those are the five reasons 
why this aroma side of the flavor wheel is ordered the way it is. It's very structured. You have your aromas, groups, subgroups, and then you have the actual attributes. It's very nice because we know clearly what are the flavor attributes that are defects. We know what is good. We have our taste, we have our aromas, and it's very clearly separated. So now we're gonna talk about the sensory lexicon from World Coffee Research. Uh, this is one of the greatest works, um, new things that's happened to coffee in the history of sensory science and coffee. In the past, we've had great cupping protocols. We've had a great flavor wheel. We had developed descriptive cupping that could describe the flavors of coffee um, in terms of aroma, in terms of the flavor, aftertaste, acidity, body, balance. But what we didn't have is a way to describe if a coffee had notes like blueberry, how much blueberry it was. And so what the sensory lexicon was able to do is to develop a wider range of descriptors for coffee, number one. Number two, it was able to quantify those descriptors. So if you look at, for example, blueberry, you can say definitively how much blueberry a coffee has on a scale from zero to 15. With number two, it's barely detectable. A level four, it's identifiable, but not very intense. Level six, slightly intense. Level eight, moderately intense. Level 10, intense. 12, very intense. 15, extremely intense. And now we are able to quantify if an attribute is there and how intense it is. And I think almost more importantly, there's a reference. And what you see here in front of you is I went shopping last night at a local grocery store here in Thailand and I tried to buy everything I could buy that you would need for these references. And you have things, a lot of McCormick products, different spices, you have some liquor, cereal, olive oil, chocolate, juices and jams and different things, some parsley, limes, grapefruit, peaches. And the Century Lexicon will take, tell you how to take these products and turn them into the reference itself. And I wanted to use an example, which is peach. On page 17 of the Century Lexicon, uh, they describe peach as the floral, perfuming, fruity, sweet, slightly sour aromatic associated with peaches. And if you want to know what the aroma of a peach should be like, you take the pit of a peach, put it in a medium snifter, and that is a intensity eight aroma of peach. However, if you want to understand the flavor of peach, you need to get this guy here, the jello peach flavored gelatin. And this tells you the flavor of peach. You need just the powder. You don't need to make it into jello and you can taste it. it. Says serve the dry powder in a one ounce cup. We don't have a one ounce cup here, so I'm just gonna taste a little bit of it. I wanna see what a level seven, wow, that's peachy. That's definitely level seven peach right there. Um, so these, we can, we can now not only know what peach tastes like, but we can know the intensity. And this helps us calibrate for any of these different references. If you can't find the exact substance, you can't officially use it as a reference, but it'll probably give you a very, very close reference and probably could be used for training purposes.
So now that we've discussed the old coffee flavor wheel and the World Coffee Research Sensory Lexicon, um, let's take a look at the uh, new SCA Coffee Tasters flavor wheel. It was developed by SCA and World Coffee Research based on the Sensory Lexicon. And really, my goal today is to uh, not fully describe it, but just to maybe help cuppers who are used to the old flavor wheel kind of get started with this new flavor wheel. Um, because it is different. It, it, w before we had kind of two circles, now we're down to one circle. And uh, some of the layout has changed. And so um, as cuppers are getting started using this, we're hoping to just give a few tips that can help you get off on the right foot. Um, and one of the things you got to understand at the beginning, I think, is just that aesthetically this thing's a lot more pleasing. It's the colors are better, the the layout um, is interesting, and there uh, is just tons more descriptors to choose from. Uh, take berry for example. Before we had one berry, now we have four berries, um, and when it comes to all the fruity flavors of coffee, we have so many more choices to choose from. Um, so I think it's gonna give us a lot more great terms to describe coffee. Um, one thing that is important to notice is just that some of these descriptors are, there's no gap in between them. And that means that in the research they found that these were closely related. If there's a small gap, they're less related. If there's a large gap, they found them even less related. Um, one of the thing is this wheel does not come out and directly say that certain flavor attributes are good or bad. That's partly because the sensory lexicon didn't. But for most cuppers, we can generally assume that anything down here in this blue area under other the chemically and paper musties, most of these are not uh, gonna be positive descriptors for coffee. Another thing that we need to be aware of with this new flavor wheel is that um, the primary tastes were not separated out. Like if you look at other flavor wheels, it's quite common that the salt and bitter would be separated out. For example, the honey flavor wheel, all, flavor wheel was also done by UC Davis and the four primary uh, tastes were separated out. But on this flavor wheel, we have salt and bitter under chemical and um, then we have sweet over here as a category. And so that could trip you up um, if you're not careful. We have the, the fourth of um, primary taste over here under is a category under sour and so it's just good to be aware of that. Uh, another thing to be aware of is just uh, here on the the new coffee tasters flavor wheel brown sugar is used as a category and, and it's not exactly the same as sugar browning but it could be transferable what was before sugar browning on the old flavor wheel. Personally, I, I absolutely love that the new flavor wheel has citric and malic acid uh, and acetic acid as descriptors. These acids we commonly use in training, and so most uh, cuppers, as you develop, should learn what is the difference between the taste of citric acid, malic acid, and acetic acid. So I love the fact that they're on the flavor wheel. They should be normal references for us as professional cuppers. Another thing that you need to realize is that some of these may not be what you actually think they are. So I strongly, strongly recommend before you use this flavor wheel to read through the Century Lexicon and look at the way they describe some of these, uh, these are aromatics. For example, fresh. When it talks about fresh, it's actually talking about the smell of fresh cut grass, but it's described here as fresh. And so that's more clear. Um, dark green. When you read dark green, you're not maybe not really sure what do they mean by dark green. But what it, when you read it, it's actually that smell of dark green leafy vegetables like spinach. Well, that's that's much more helpful. And so I, I highly recommend use these two uh, together. 
And if you have any questions about what the descriptor means, it's probably really important that you go back to what the intention was here in the lexicon versus just assuming it and then possibly describing it wrong.